My name is Stacy Williams, and I am here to introduce my exhibit, Learning Through Teaching, which is really an interactive display that explores my experiences having learned the displayed art forms while teaching them. On display, we're gonna be looking a lot at weaving, some at carving, and also at design. The fundamentals of Northwest Coast art really need to be adhered to in order for the art to continue on. When you first walk in the door, there is a bin of little paper bags that are holding little treasures inside. Those treasures are including warp made from merino wool or uh, boiled cedar. It is including roses. There is even some cedar in there along with some raw wool. This is intended for you to hang on to throughout the exhibit so that you have that experience of being connected to these art forms. The flow of the exhibit is tended to go in a clockwise direction, starting on the left as soon as you go in the door. Uh, you have the baskets on display on the wall are including a lot of my firsts, as well as the firsts of some of my peers and my, and my friends and family. And so there's my first basket, my brother's first basket, uh, another student that I've worked with, Josephine Guthrie, her child hat is on display that she worked on under instruction from Holly Churchill. Moving on from there, you go into seeing the tree of life that is right dead center in the gallery and is ready for you to pretend to peel a strip off of it. Behind that, we have the rising master's wall, where I go into explaining how some of these art forms need to be realized at a fundamental level, and you really need to go back to the basics and figure out how to do these items before you can go and start making a basket that has the base of a five-gallon bucket, or a hat that's going to go on canoe journey, or even a little baby doll that needs some, some dress up. Uh, moving on from there, you do have some of the students that I've worked with, you have some of the peers that I've been in, in classes with, as well as some of my, my family's work. The Tree of Life was born from an idea of students needing to understand what it is like to peel from a tree without taking a whole group of people out to the forest and actually stripping the tree. The impact that harvesting has on trees is, is not subtle at all. If you were to over harvest an item or from a tree, it's going to kill the tree, unfortunately, and that's not good. And so I was really trying to show the proper amount that you would gather from a tree, the right size of tree that it needs to be. If the tree is fitting in one arm, it's way too small. If you can't get your hands around the back of the tree, it's way too big. And so really explaining that right size of tree. I started this activity at Houtling Elementary where I was able to work with some students with painter's tape on the wall and pretend to take a strip that way. After that was successful, the idea of having a full-size tree in the gallery was born. What's been driving me most recently is the experiences that I've had working with museums and working with collections and truly understanding how the ancestors worked with these items and how can that continue on in this current day and age. And so I try to really explore with making wider baskets, with making miniature baskets, with making ropes, with making hats. There's a lot of different items that you can make and there's not too much limit to what you, to what you can't make. There's a lot of diversity within the art forms. Ketchikan itself is really to thank here for providing classes, for providing mentors, for even providing chaperone opportunities to meet these new students. Beyond that, Ketchikan itself is host to many wonderful teachers, and I'd truly love to name them all, but to highlight a few, uh, you know, when I was in, in school, I learned under Barbara Pierce up at the high school in the Native Art Studies program. In high school, I also learned from Holly Churchill at the Spring Break Weaving Program over at the Totem Heritage Center. Beyond that, I went to work at the museum and I got to meet even more fabulous teachers, Diane Douglas Willard, Debbie McClavey, Catherine Rousseau. There are so many wonderful instructors in this town and I encourage everybody to reach out to your most closest teacher and just learn something today. What stands out to me is the amount of cedar that is all together in this room. Uh, you know, from cedar planks to cedar ropes to cedar hats to cedar baskets. There's so much cedar in this room right now and it's truly incredible to think about how long it took for that cedar to grow and then to be harvested and then to be made into something. 
One of the baskets that really stands out to me is the basket that I made for a private collection, uh, aka my father, and he wanted something that was a large gathering basket made from using local resources. And so I had to start at the beginning. I had to wait for harvesting season, which falls in the spring around May and June. I had to go out and harvest all the material. I had to season the material. And then I had to prep the material and then I got to actually weave. But this basket has a base the size of a five gallon bucket and it has a removable and replaceable strap that I made from boiled yellow cedar bark. And this basket truly just came together in the most spectacular way. So at the interactive table, there are four different stations where you can either take some projects home to do or you're welcome to do them right here in the gallery. Whichever option you choose, I hope that you will make it back to the box that is on the table for the interactive elements to be displayed in. And so this is really inviting everybody to be a part of this exhibit and to see themselves as being in this gallery. I remember being able to enter into the 100 by 100 exhibit or into the Blueberry exhibit. And once you see your piece in a gallery for the first time, you, you want to have more. And I really wanted to provide that opportunity for everybody, young, old, small, big, everybody to be able to enter something into the interactive exhibit. So if you've got something at home that you want to bring in and stick in there, it's going to go on display and hopefully be seen by a lot of people and loved by all as well. But the interactive elements are a plating activity with some paper strips. There are some pipe cleaners put together for you to pretend to make some rope and trust me, it'll be really strong when it's done. There are some templates for you to try to fit together your own form line design. And finally, there will be cups that have some yarn so that you can weave around it as though you were weaving your own basket. If none of that appeals to you, there are also cedar chips. And these cedar chips have pens that you can write a note, you can draw a picture, or you can just take a blank cedar chip, pop it in the box and claim that you were here. Wonderful, thank you very much, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you.